Hello there, how you doing? My name is Jerome and I am this Spirituality 2. This is my second channel. I have another channel and I call myself the Sane Realist on that channel. Um, I got a strike on that channel for um, presuming to speak words which disagreed with the Center for Disease Control and YouTube's general policy guidelines. I will avoid that um, with this channel. This channel's not about the same thing. This channel, I'm going to focus strictly on spirituality, spiritual topics, um, my life lessons, my life journey, uh, the I Ching. You know, this, this specifically is the first video in the I Ching series. The I Ching, or Book of Changes, This is the Wilhelm edition of it. This is uh, a very old book. <laughs> it's falling apart. Um, it doesn't like humidity. <laughs> um, but it is, I believe, still 1795. It has been that same price forever. I've owned several of these. This one in particular um, was given to me by my brother, and this is the actual I Ching that I got introduced to the book. I saw it sitting on the shelf in his house, and I'm like, huh, what's that? And I pulled it down, and I opened it, and I looked at it. I was 16 at the time, and I was like, well, that's fascinating. I don't know what to do with that. And, and so I asked, and they told me how to consult it. You use, basically, it's a random determination using three coins or three, any objects with a positive and a negative side, a heads and a tails. And uh, you could throw these coins six times. You consult a chart in the back of the book, right there, which tells you what chapter you've gotten from your coin throws. And each chapter is an amazing spiritual lesson in of itself. It, it fits in with the moral codes and guidelines of all religions that I can think of. It quotes from the Quran. It quotes from the sayings of Jesus. You know, like in the chapter called Retreat, for instance, it quotes the uh, New Testament saying that Jesus, remember that Jesus said, I say unto you, resisteth not evil. And there's a whole, whole series of thoughts that go into what that means, you know, and, that, and that's what this is about. This is about discovering little tidbits which you didn't think about. And, and it creates wisdom, it creates a, a, an understanding of truth in the world and it, and it is an oracle i mean it's considered an oracle it's a, when i am in a challenging life situation or any time really but especially if i'm being challenged you know i'll consult the i ching and i and i always get always always get pertinent advice and the correct advice do i always follow it no do I look back in retrospect and think to myself, geez, if I would have just done it that way, then this probably wouldn't have turned out like this. Yes. So the advice is always right. It's always good. It's fundamental. It's universal. And it is from God. I really believe it. That being said, let's turn to chapter one of the I Ching, which is one of the most significant and difficult to understand chapters and, and longest text-wise it's long if I can find it here part one creative it's like one two 
two and a half pages. What I'm doing in this series is I'm reading the introduction, or the, the basically the front of the thing. You can see each hexagram is a combination of six lines. If you get two heads, it's a solid line. If you get two tails, it's a broken line. You throw three coins, and if, two, if you've got two heads and a tail, that's a solid line. If you have two tails and a head, that's a broken line. If you have three heads, that's a solid line changing to a broken line. If you have three tails, it's a broken line changing to a solid line. That being said, let's read. The first hexagram is made up of six unbroken lines. These unbroken lines stand for the primal power, which is light giving, active, strong, and of the spirit. The hexagram is consistently strong in character, and since it is without weakness, its essence is power or energy. Its image is heaven. Its energy is represented by a, as unrestricted by any fixed conditions in space and therefore conceived of as motion. Time is regarded as the basis for this motion. Thus the hexagram includes also the power of time and the power of persisting in time, that is duration. The power represented by the hexagram is to be interpreted in a dual sense, in terms of its action on the universe and its actions on the world of men. In relation to the universe, the hexagram expresses the strong creative action of the deity in relation to the human world, it denotes the creative action of the holy man or sage, of the ruler or the leader of men, who through his power awakens and develops their highest nature. Footnote. This hexagram is assigned to the fourth month, May, June, when the light giving power is at its zenith, i.e., before the summer solstice has marked the beginning of the year's decline. The German text reads April, May. This is obviously a slip for the first month of the Chinese year extends approximately from the beginning of February to the beginning of March. The new year is a variable date falling around February 5th. There are other slips of this sort occurring further in the book and have been similarly corrected but without special mention. So Wilhelm was careful to say here that they didn't have all the facts perfect in his translation and, and that this one he's showing you that he's correcting it and why and he said the rest, mm, I'll just correct them. The judgment. The Description of the hexagram is followed by the judgment. The judgment is, it is what it is. It is a, a true look at the situation, if you will. The judgment says, the creative works through sublime success, furthering through perseverance. Perseverance means moving forward consistently, despite danger, despite whatever else happens. What happened to me on the Akina Bay Bridge required perseverance. And I was furthered through that perseverance. According to the original meaning of the attributes, sublimity, potentiality of success, power to further or perseverance, are paired. When an individual draws this oracle, it means that success will come to him from the primal depths of the universe and that everything depends on his seeking his happiness 
and not of others in one way only. That is, by perseverance in what is right. This specific meaning of the four attributes, because the subject of speculation at an early date, became the subject of speculation at an early date. The Chinese word here rendered by sublime means literally head or origin. This is why Confucius says in explaining it, great indeed is the generating power of the creative. All beings own their beginning to it. This power permeates all heaven for this attribute inheres in the three others as well. The beginning of all things lies still in the beyond and in the form of ideas that have yet to become real. Let me make that statement again. The beginning of all things lies still in the beyond in the form of ideas that have yet to become real. But the creator furthermore has the power to lend to these archetypes of ideas. This is indicated by the word success. So creativity creates things in the beyond through ideas that have yet to become real. The ideas are generated by the power of the creative. Furthermore, the power to lend form to these archetypes of ideas this is indicated by success, and the process is represented by an image from nature. The clouds pass and the rain does its work, and all individual beings flow into their forms. Applied to the human world, these attributes show the great man the way to notable success, because he sees with great clarity causes and effects. He completes the six steps and at the right time, and mounts upward towards heaven at the right time, as on six dragons. The six steps are six different positions given in this hexagram, which are represented later by the dragon symbol. Here it is shown that the way to access to success lies in apprehending and giving actuality to the way of the universe. The way to success lies in apprehending and then giving actuality to the way of the universe. That's Tao, T-A-O, which is the law which is running from the beginning to the end through all phenomenon in time. Thus, each step attained forward becomes a preparation for the next. Time is no longer a hindrance, but has been seen as a means of making actual what is potential. The act of creation, having found expression in these two attributes, sublimity and success, the work of conservation is shown to be a continuous actualization and differentiation of form this is expressed by the two terms furthering, literally creating that which accords to the nature of a given being, and persevering, literally correct and firm. The course of the creative alters and shapes beings until each attains its true specific nature. That can mean good or bad. It doesn't our moral codes don't matter in that case. This, you could look at the creative as the power of God, that which begets all things, that which is the source, the source of power, the source of energy that starts it all off. In the relation to the human sphere, it shows how the great man brings peace and security to the world through his activity in creating order. He, ties, he towers high above the multitudes of beings 
and all lands are united in peace. Another line of speculation goes still further in separating the words sublime and success, furthering and perseverance, and parallels them with four carnal virtues in humanity. To sublimity, which is the fundamental principle embracing all other attributes, it links love. To the attribute success are linked the mores, which regulate and organize Strength of patience. That can't be right. That wasn't right. Okay. Expressions of love. So let's read that again. We have <clears throat> sublimity, which as the fundamental principle embraces all the other attributes. It links love to the attribute success are linked the mores, which regulate and organize the expression of love and thereby make the world successful. The attribute furthering is correlated with justice, which creates the condition in which each receives that which is accord to their being and which is due to him or her and which can, constitutes his happiness. That's what furthering is. The attribute perseverance is correlated with wisdom, which discerns the immutable laws of all happen, that happens and can therefore bring about enduring conditions. To see what's real, I think is what they're getting at. These speculations already broached in the commentary called Wen Yen later formed the bridge connecting the philosophy of the five stages of change as laid down in the book of history called Su Ching with the philosophy of the book of changes which is solely based on the polarity of positive and negative principles. That is so intense. In the course of time, this combination of the two systems of thought opened the way for an increasingly intricate number system. This is a long one, folks. This is a long one, folks, and I'm sorry about that. I think I fell off for a minute. The image. The image is what you could create as a way to see something outside of itself. Um, the image is, the movement of heaven is full of power. That's the image of the creative. The creative as an image can be seen as the movement of heaven. Thus the superior man makes himself strong and untiring. <laughs> Since there is only one heaven, the doubling of this triagram, of which heaven is the image, indicates the movement of heaven. One complete revolution of heaven makes a day. And the re repetition of the triagram means that each day is followed by another. This creates the idea of time. Since it is the same heaven moving with untiring power, there is also created the idea of duration, both in and beyond time, a movement that never stops nor slackens, just as one day follows another in an unending course. This duration in time is the image of power and the inherent power of the creative. Power through time, consistency without stop, beyond time, beyond our little silly silly calendar. With this image of the model, the sage learns how to best develop himself so his influence may endure. He must make himself strong in every way by consciously casting out all that is inferior and degrading. Thus, he attains that tirelessness which depends upon conscientiously limiting the fields of his activity. 
That's chapter one of the Book of Changes. The I Ching, or the Book of Changes. I'm going to call this uh, the I Ching series. I might as well. Um, my name is Jerome, and this is uh, spiritual Spirituality 2. And I hope you have a good day.